If the NBA's Giannis Antetokounmpo has yet to trademark Greek freak or the term freak, which I'm pretty sure he has with Nike, given his signature shoe and his brand with them and whatnot, but in the unlikely event that he has not yet trademarked that term, he'd be wise to do so. Otherwise, the NFL's ultimate unicorn at cornerback and new fifth round Tariq the Freak Woolen might just end up running away with that nickname. I'm your host, Calvin Domingo, a.k.a. Steezy A. Smith, back at it yet again with another NFL draft profile. Actually, no, this is our first NFL draft profile. I'm not going in order in terms of the players that Seattle did draft from rounds one through seven. I'm just going in a random order, starting off with arguably my favorite pick out of all the selections that Seattle made in the NFL draft. As always, before we do begin, if you guys aren't already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to also leave us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Steezy Smith, as I've been working very diligently not only to improve our following and our audience and our engagement on those other social media apps, but hence why I haven't been able to spend nearly as much time on YouTube. But if you guys want to follow some of our other content outside of YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and hopefully pretty soon, TikTok as well, same handle, at Steezy A. Smith, S-T-E-E-Z-Y-A-S-M-I-T-H. Now to address that question in the title, I'm not saying that Richard Sherman and Tariq Woolen have the same sort of game because obviously and athletically, that's not the case. The only reason why I'm asking that is because is Tariq Woolen the next in line to take that Richard Sherman route and emerge and evolve into a superstar? Obviously, as we all know, there are a whole bunch of parallels between the two. Richard Sherman was selected 154th overall in the fifth round. Tariq Woolen was taken 153rd overall in the fifth round. So literally within picks of each other. Obviously, Richard Sherman played wide receiver to begin his collegiate career. He ended up transitioning from wide receiver to cornerback. And as we all know, he's turned himself into a future first ballot Hall of Famer, beginning with what he did in Seattle. Tariq Woolen spent the first three years of his career playing wide receiver and reluctantly in the middle of his third season, moved over from cornerback. And then starting in 2020, which is the year we started this YouTube channel, by the way, towards the middle part of 2020, he permanently moved over to cornerback. Now, he's only played two years at cornerback. He's only played a grand total of 16 games, 16 games playing in the cornerback position. And when looking at the raw numbers, he might not be the best or he might not even be considered a ball hawk per se, but he most definitely has the potential and the tools to certainly become one if so desired. I mean, when we talk about Pete Carroll, Carl Scott, Sean Desai, and the rest of the coaching staff on defense, these guys are known as, quarter, or as cornerback gurus, as DB wizards, specifically Pete Carroll. Carl Scott and Sean Desai also have had plenty of experience working in the secondaries. They've worked with elite secondaries. They've worked with elite prospects. They've worked with and molded corners into becoming better than average, into stars and whatnot. But starting off with Pete Carroll, I mean, yo, he's the ultimate guru. DB guru, right? The DB wizard as I don't know if he's claimed it himself, but many know him as just that. And just like what he did with Richard Sherman, I truly believe that he could do that with the unicorn of a prospect in Tariq Woolen. A 426 40 yard dash for somebody that's 6 foot 4, 205 pounds, a 42 inch vertical leap. No one has ever done that in NFL history. Now, looking at some of the fastest 40 yard dash times by a quarterback, these guys were all 6 1 and shorter. Fabian Washington back in 2005 ran a 429 at 5'11, 175 pounds. Champ Bailey back in 1999 ran a 428 at 6'0, 192 pounds, coming from Georgia. Jalen Myrick back in 2017. From Minnesota, ran a 428 at 5'11, 200 pounds. Demarcus Van Dyke out of Miami back in 2011, around a 428 at 6'1, 185 pounds. And the fastest 40 yard dash ever recorded by a cornerback was Stanford Route coming out of Houston back in 2005, who ran a 427 at 6'1, 195 pounds. And as we all know by now, Tariq Willen won the fastest 40 yard dash time by anybody 6'4 or taller. Nobody that fast. Nobody that big should be that fast. It just does not make any sort of sense. And for him to, to have a 42 inch vertical leap, that just does not make any sort of sense. Hence why him and Richard Sherman and their games aren't exactly similar. And the only thing that's really similar about the two is the fact that both initially played wide receiver in college only to transition to playing cornerback. Outside of that, I think the parallels are, I don't know if there's any more. Richard Sherman's 40 yard dash time back in 2011, 4-5-4. Four, 
However, his vertical leap was 38 inches compared to Tariq Wong's 42 inches. Now, in examining and determining some of Tariq Wong's strengths at cornerback, I think the fact that he only has two years of experience, the fact that he only has 16 games under his belt can work both as a positive and a negative. Looking at it from the positive point of view, I think that obviously working under a defensive guru like a Pete Carroll, he has so much time to, to season and become a, a cornerback with technique that's precise that's flawless to become a cornerback that's full-fledged at the position and not someone who's just raw going off of athletic ability height speed traits and whatnot i think he's under the perfect system now it could also be looked at as a negative but in seattle's case they don't need him to start week one they don't need him to start year one he could take all the time that he needs in year one obviously working under nfl coaches and training staffs he could develop more weight he could add to his strength because those are some of the weaknesses those are some of the knocks on his game now his footwork now his technique especially as it pertains to press coverage might not be perfect but that's going to come with more time being spent playing the cornerback position he improved rapidly in his time at utsa the university of texas san antonio and some of the strengths that he exhibited i think are, are very salivating the potential obviously that he carries with them it is oh my gosh like he's oozing with potential especially if developed and coached properly not only does he have the length to excel in press coverage obviously he didn't excel in press coverage in college but because he has the length because he has the tools because he has the recovery speed now if you were to to lose a couple of steps or to kind of get lost in coverage he has the recovery speed to to be able to to catch up to anyone no one is going to be able to run past them especially not at 426 not with that blazing speed i mean oh my goodness yes seattle might still have a need at cornerback but because they did draft the kobe Bryant, because trey brown is still there because Sidney jones has spent more time in the system because sean desai didn't want to bring in an Artie burns like i said he doesn't have to come in in year one and make an impact he's going to have to do that via special teams and again he might not necessarily have showed the talent to be a ball hawk but because he has a 33 and 5 8 inch arms i mean look he has the arm length that every nfl coach wants in its cornerbacks hence why i believe he will eventually excel in press coverage as of right now he's not there yet but i love his ability to be patient when the ball is in the air he's able to eliminate catch space with all that length he's able to, to time when the ball is in the air and so yes he's not a ball hawk yet but he'll work on that and it'll come as the seasoning comes as well not only that like I also talked about, he does have to, to get stronger. He does have to hit the weight room, especially when it comes as it pertains to run support. I'm not saying that he shows any sort of disinterest when it comes to run support, but sometimes he's not able to hold up against blockers. And there's going to be tight ends that he's going to have to go up against. There's going to be bigger, more physical receivers that he's going to have to go up against. There's going to be more elite and explosive athletes that he's going to have to go up against. And so he's definitely going to have to spend not only more time in the weight room, but just more time packing on some pounds, maybe eating just a little bit more. But some of the things I love about him, like I talked about, aren't just the, the size and aren't just the, the six foot four, the height. It isn't just the traits and whatnot. When he's not in press coverage, I think he's a dancer with his feet. I mean, shout out to my OG. Shout out to Big Bird, man. At World of Sports Network, aka Guru's Film Room to G to the U to the R to the U. He talked about how Tariq Woolen is just an absolute dancer. If you're a cornerback, chances are you're probably a dancer. Or if you aren't, then you probably can't be a good dancer because of the way you're able to move your feet, how you're able to just use your positioning. The footwork is just there. And like I talked about, he's not the most adept. The technique just is a little bit raw when it comes to his press coverage, but outside of that and zone coverage he's able to he showcased great footwork i think he knows how to use his feet well he knows how to position his feet well he's a dancer out there he's able to mirror receivers and sometimes able to copy some of the routes that he's seeing i mean obviously as a wide receiver he's done that before and so i think look man he's just in the perfect situation i think come year two year three he could be a superstar at the cornerback position i mean he's already good uh, he's not great but i think he most definitely can develop into being a great football player now i don't know if he's going to become a richard sherman 2.0 but i like what he brings to the table i mean oh my gosh again how many times am i going to say this but six foot four four two six 40 yard dash 42 inch vertical leap and yes athleticism isn't everything we've seen examples of guys coming to the league just off a of straight athleticism or they would come into the league based on their athletic and the traits and whatnot and sometimes it hasn't always worked out at the end of the day athleticism traits physical traits size speed and whatnot that can only take you so far and like corbin smith of sports illustrated illustrated in one of his articles regarding a Tariq woolen we've seen and he's come from the Raiders, OB Melanfonwu, come into the league before with tantalizing traits and a combination of size, speed, athleticism, and whatnot. And he ain't necessarily pan out in the league. And I'm not saying that's where Tariq Wong is going to go. I'm just saying that 
athleticism can only take you so far. But like I also talked about, he landed in the perfect situation under a Pete Carroll. He's done this before, and yes, it hasn't always turned out. Obviously, Seattle had selected a Trey Flowers, but the difference between that is Trey Flowers was a safety in college. He never played cornerback in college. He also never played wide receiver, to my knowledge. And so Trey Flowers, I wouldn't put him in that same category. Theo Simon obviously was... And I, to put it generously, a failure at the NFL level, but he wasn't nearly as athletic. He wasn't nearly as explosive. I don't think he had that wide receiver background. Maybe he did. I could be wrong, but he didn't necessarily possess some of the same traits or even awareness that a Tariq Woolen brings to the table. Woolen might not be the most instinctual or even the most adept at play recognition, but then again, what more seasoning that will come. Inexperience is really his biggest weakness at the cornerback position. Outside of that, I mean, yes, he's going to have to get low. He's going to have to be able to sink his hips. It doesn't help that he's so tall and so big and so wide. But look, I think eventually it all comes together. And right now he has got to be the NFL's ultimate unicorn at the cornerback position. This has never been seen ever before. And if there's anyone that's going to mold and develop him into the star that he should become, it's Pete Carroll and that Seattle Seahawks defense. Shout out to Carl Scott and Sean Desai as well because those guys are DB wizards in their own right. That marks the end of this episode, y'all. We will be drafting more draft profiles as the weeks and as time progresses. I want to start off with the Tariq Woolen just because I feel like not only is the potential so oozing and tantalizing and salivating, now he's just one of my favorite picks in the entire draft. I mean, it doesn't even matter if it was the Seahawks. Just my favorite draft pick in general. And so that's why I want to start off by talking about him. As always, if you guys aren't already, please be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are on the road to 4K. We've been working also very diligently on Instagram and Twitter to increase our following on there. So for our non-YouTube content, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. As always, all glory to God. Be sure to tune into our live stream from just the other day. We talked about Russ making his return to Seattle. I had a very special guest with me, so please be sure to check that out if you guys have not already. If you have any video ideas, suggestions, if you want to hop on a future show, send us a DM, follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, or even drop a comment down below. But that's it for me today, y'all. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay blessed. As always, all glory to God. And Steezy out. Amen. Again, this video is going to be dedicated to Mr. Todd Nines. While that concludes this video, we have loads of other content. You don't have to stop watching there. Other content on our channel homepage, as well as our social media platforms. And again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for us. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Nothing but love. And Steezy out.